Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to the Live Life Golden Show. This is episode 39, Money is an Energy, How to Stop Repelling It and Start Attracting It. So whatever your money story is, today we're going to take a very in-depth look at that and see if we can start to pull things apart in order to create a new money story. Because everything is energy, and everything that you wrap a story around is created from that story. And it's based on your responses, it's based on how you feel, it's based on your set point. So we're going to go through set point. So I looked up, I'm really excited about this conversation, and I have to say, you know, I've been through many different phases of my life with finances. You know, I've had barely enough. I've had not enough. I've had more than enough. And I'm starting to understand how the energy works when it comes to attracting the abundance in my life and how the worthiness of who I am and the passion that I give to life contributes to that money story and contributes to how much money is given to me and how much value I create on this earth is shown to me. It is reflected to me. So it's been, you know, the last couple of years have been a major reflection about how I feel and the value that I produce and how I feel about that value and then having it reflected to me. So I've watched the energy on money quite a bit. I've got, you know, a long history of watching the money, the money story and a long history of watching what I'm doing, becoming a conscious creator, becoming really conscious about the way I feel about money, the way I spend money, what I, you know, what I what I do with my money. And that has contributed to where I sit today. So you know, I'll just go over a little backstory and then I'm going to give you a couple of definitions, but just a little backstory on kind of where we came from. So my husband and I were both raised in families that I would say probably are middle class. Um, you know, his story, I think he had, there was definitely a lot of lack, his family members, his parents were both um, factory workers and, you know, hourly workers where my parents were more entrepreneurial. My dad was more entrepreneurial, I'll say. Um, My mom actually did some network marketing too. So she was, there was definitely like an entrepreneurial spirit in my family. My grandfather was an entrepreneur. And so I got a picture of that. And my husband, for whatever reason, I don't know if he connected with my family because we've, you know, known each other for so long, if he connected with that entrepreneurial spirit more than just like going and making money at a job. Now there's nothing wrong with going and making money at a job. People, we need people to work in jobs. It's just the value that you create in those jobs and what you decide for yourself is okay. And then recognizing that your job is not the only way to make money, that there are other avenues, that there are side incomes, that there are all these different options in this world, especially now with the internet has totally opened us up to making money in a different way. So um, I'm going to share a couple of ideas for you as far as that goes, but I'm sure, I'm sure that you have ideas for yourself. So it never really made sense. Like after a while, my husband went to carpentry school right out of high school. We were both employees for a long time. Um, He started carpentry school right out of high school and started working for someone. For many, many, many years, we worked for people. And he made a good amount of money, but it was always like, you know, up paycheck to paycheck, just living paycheck to paycheck. And over time, he started to realize that he was never going to get further than that paycheck unless he started doing things on his own, unless he started doing things on the side. So he actually started doing side jobs for people in our soccer team. Yeah, my, our kids were part of this little kicker soccer team. He was one of the coaches and somebody needed a job done and he started this side work. And when he started the side work, things started to happen, right? He opened up a pathway to a different way of making money and to the point where he ended up getting you know, bigger and bigger and bigger jobs and ended up like creating a really incredible income stream for us, which enabled us, enabled me to stay home with our kids, with our four kids, and enabled us to actually buy a home and, you know, start living that American dream, right? Like all these <laughs> big bills and this, you know, nice cars and big house and swimming pool and hot tub and all those things. And it was really wonderful and it was really great. However, I will say, because we had never lived that before, up until that point, we had been living paycheck to paycheck. There were oftentimes I was bouncing checks because I never really, I never really was good at managing the money. And because we had four girls and our lifestyle was so busy, there were oftentimes that we were coming up short 
part and the feeling around the money was anxious. There was a lot of anxiety. There was a feeling between, so we rented a home for a long time, this tiny little house and all, most of the rooms were bedrooms except for the kitchen and the living room. And through that time, I just remember thinking like, we are more than this. I always had that feeling inside of me. We are more than this. And it's not to say that you are your material possessions, but when you have that desire in your heart, when you have that feeling, when you drive by houses, beautiful homes, or you visit friends that have beautiful homes and you have that excitement and that feeling that one day it is going to be yours, you're tuning into abundance. Instead of feeling miserable, we started to get excited. We started to see potentials and possibilities. And that's when the money started to really roll in. And we were able, and our house was such a miracle. We bought a five bedroom house that was an absolute miracle. I mean, it was just Everything that we ever wanted checked off every box and the miracles that happened in order for us to buy that home were incredible. Now we ended up foreclosing on that home about 10 years later. Um, but that's an interesting story too. And I will attribute a lot of the financial difficulties that we went through, you know, in part of our spiritual development and part of our progress and also in starting to watch the energy so that I could speak to this, so that I could really learn, you know, how was I feeling? Most of the time that we lived in that home, there was a lot of anxiety. There was a lot of spending a lot of money, like money was flowing in and flowing out very quickly. And so there was never really a lot of financial peace in that home. There was just, you know, there wasn't tracking. There was just a lot of spending and a lot of making and just a lot. It was a lot. So when that finally, when the crash happened in 2008 and my husband's business literally got wiped out overnight because he was working for a lot of people that were flipping homes. So when the bank stopped giving money, you know, we looked at each other like, holy crap, how are we going to do this? I mean, our bills at that point were like 15,000 a month and we were looking at no income, like literally no income. So he started taking jobs for people that were just horrible, you know, just terrible situations. And we, you know, we just kept in this real muck and mire of not being able to breathe every day, just feeling like we couldn't even function. We just had to figure out a way to get through it, you know, and there were so many times when we felt a lot of angst and maybe, you know, even fought about money and things like that. But at the end of the day, we actually ended up uh, joining a network marketing company. I know I've shared this before, but it's really interesting what happened in our marriage because we ended up coming together and we ended up becoming a team and we ended up deciding, I mean, we were a team up until then, but it became different. You know, it became like, we're in this together. It wasn't just, you need to go figure out how to make money and I'm taking care of the kids. It's like, we both have to get out there right now. We both, it kind of lit a fire under me as well. And that's what created a lot of hope. It created a lot of light. It created a lot of potential. Being part of that network marketing company always just connected us with wonderful people, wonderful, wealthy people, and um, actually got us out in the world. We started, you know, we did some travel. We shouldn't even have been traveling, but somehow we found a way, right? Like we sold things. Uh, we did crazy things just to be a part of this, to be part of the energy, to be a part of the excitement. And we tra because we traveled, we actually got, you know, kind of ignited to move. We got excited about moving west. And, and so that was a whole other story. But when it came to feeling abundant, there were times when, you know, we had to really work on that worthiness story. And I'm going to get into worthiness today, because if you've got that energy of unworthiness, that's why you're not creating money. Because if you've got that unworthiness shit underneath, it is really hard to become abundant when you don't feel like you are worth it. So we've got to clean up that story. So let me give you a couple of definitions before I jump into all of the teachings today. So I looked up money and um, it's a current, this was very interesting. It's a current medium of exchange. I thought that was really interesting in the form of coins or banknotes. So, you know, we put all this, this energy into money and I will say this, there is not, you will not create a second of joy in your life by worrying about money. You will not create a, a, a minute piece of abundance by worrying about money. That energy of worry and anxiety around money is what's repelling it. It's what's keeping it away. 
And if you look at money from more of a higher perspective, like we don't take it with us, right? Like they're not filling people's caskets with it. They're not taking it into the next life. So if we don't take it with us and it's just an exchange of energy here, how do we get really good about the about the illusion of money. Like there's such an illusion of money, right? Like it's just these numbers on a screen. And I remember so often waking up in the morning and my bank account would be negative. And I would look at my phone and I would just go, that is not my worth in the world. That is not my value in the world. That's a joke to me. And when I started getting like that and I started kind of laughing at it and just mocking it and saying, hell no, that's not who I am. That's when things really started to change because I stopped feeling so bad. I stopped feeling so constricted and so negative about my bank balance. And I started looking at my life and looking at the reasons I had for gratitude and abundance and for worthiness. So there was a shift that happened. And that was the second time that we went through stuff. So the first time when we were going through that whole financial thing, there was a big shift that needed to happen with my husband and the way he felt about his work. And when he started to value what he brought to people and he got out of just being so concerned about making tons of money and he just got back to his craft, you know, his craft of building beautiful things for people and for connecting with people, his, um, his tagline in his business, it's Michael Duffy Carpentry, building relationships. That's his tagline, and it always has been. So in that gratitude for people and making beautiful things for people and making beautiful homes for people, he stepped back into his craftsmanship. And that's when that that time we took over and started to make the money that we were used to, you know, the money that would pay our bills that really sustained us. Now, we weren't able to save our home and we, we came to the point where we actually didn't want to save the home. We came to the point where we actually realized, you know, the bank wasn't going to work with us. And that that system is so broken. And I don't even want to get into that because that's victimhood, right? The fact that I lived in a home for five years when it was under foreclosure tells me that I'm a pretty powerful creator. So um, when I my intention was, I will give this home back when I'm ready. And that's exactly what happened. In fact, they didn't take it for six months after we left. And our credit scores, um, you know, they really came back very quickly because we worked very hard to get them back. So all of that stuff is gone now, which is which is great and everything. And, and someone made out really well with our house, you know, they put it up for auction and sold it for half of what we paid for it. So, um, you know, somebody benefited from that for sure. But I remember feeling like, you know, this foreclosure and everything that's happening to us is happening for us so that we can go and live our dream, that we don't have to sell a home that we're upside down in. We don't have to carry a lot of debt from this. We're just going to walk away from it. We were able to save money because we weren't paying a mortgage and we were able to actually step into our dreams. Now, that may sound really shitty to you. You might think we are shitty people for that. And that's okay. You can judge me all you want. It is what it is. It was the steps that took us into following our dreams. And um, I don't really care what people think about me. I'm just sharing my story because I think it's helpful. And we all do what we have to do when we're faced with situations that are less than optimal. And finding a way to actually live your dreams and take that leap of faith during times that may be very, very difficult is kind of a beautiful thing. It's a wonderful thing, actually. So um, the other thing I looked up was abundance, which I wasn't very satisfied with the meaning, but the meaning was a very large quantity of something, right? That's what abundance is. So I looked up abundance. Underneath that was the spiritual meaning of abundance. And this is so cool. It is less about material possessions and revolving instead around an appreciation of life in its fullness, joy, and strength of mind, body, and soul. I thought that was freaking fantastic. It doesn't resolve or revolve around material possessions, but instead around an appreciation of life in its fullness, joy, and strength of mind, body, and soul. <sighs> so cool. Abundance is an energy. Money is an energy and it's going to be conducted by how you feel. The highest forms of vibration in your life, if you think about, you know, how you feel every single day, appreciation, love, gratitude, joy, all of that is in the field of abundance. So the happier you are, the more you're living your passions, the more you're feeling fulfilled in life, 
the more the exchange of money is going to value you because you feel valued, you feel worthy, you feel like you're getting up every day and doing the things that really, you know, fulfill your soul, like fulfill your spirit and make you feel like you are living life more to the fullest instead of in like this life sucking job. Now, if you are in a life sucking job, my advice to you would be to find a way to tune into this abundance every day, whether it's going in nature, it's looking at beautiful flowers. Um, If you're in a cold environment, I have to remember this. I mean, snow is really beautiful, right? Um, If it's super freezing out, maybe it's sitting in front of your fire with a cup of hot chocolate under a blanket and a cat. I did that a lot. I had to do that a lot because that's what brought me joy. Uh, Meditation. Meditation is a great way to tune you into a higher frequency. So I thought that was really cool. So what keeps you, um, we're going to get into what keeps you from attracting more money and keeps money actually away from you. You ready for this? Okay. These are the things, the things that keep you from getting the money. Uh, Fear. Fear, it pushes money away. You know, anytime you have a ton of anxiety, and I will say, I have created money even through fear. So fear is not something that is going to cut you off from it. What it does is it slows down the energy to it. So when you're, it's, fear is always lack of faith, lack of faith. When you have lack of faith, you have lack of flow of energy and you're keeping yourself from all the blessings that are trying to come to you. You do not imagine, you cannot imagine, and you do not know what's out here being orchestrated for you. And because of that, when you get into fear and anxiety, you kind of block the blow, the, the flow of the blessings that are trying to come to you. So letting go of that fear and anxiety. Now, I know sometimes that may feel like a full-time job and it may feel almost impossible. You know, I told you guys when I wake, when I used to wake up in the morning and I couldn't breathe, I felt like I was underwater, like I couldn't take a breath. I mean, those are real freaking feelings, right? So that's working on that story. That's, you know, going into meditation, drilling into these stories. I was working with energy healers. I always have worked with energy healers. Um, I'm not currently because I kind of have my own process right now, but I always find it valuable. I just don't, I'm not connected with anyone right now. I would love to be, but I'm just not. So I always worked with people that would help me to see those unconscious beliefs, those things that were running underneath that were screwing with my money story. Um, Feeling broke. Yeah, you feel broke. Have you ever noticed when you feel super broke how something breaks? Always. Your washing machine breaks, your fridge breaks, because you're feeling broke. That's why. When you feel broke, the universe is going to give you more reasons to feel broke. So how do you feel, um, how do you not feel broke when your bank account is like super low? You do things that help you to feel that gratitude, love, and appreciation. You do things, you give, you get more generous, you um, believe in the flow, you let go of these old freaking stories and beliefs that are probably your parents, possibly your grandparents. I talked a lot in my group this week about, we did a money teaching in my group this week and we talked about, most of us are in our, you know, um, 40s to like 60s. And we talked about, you know, we've still got depression energy from our grandparents, like that's in our bloodlines, you know, that depression energy where things were short, there were shortages. Um, Right now in our world, there's all this talk of shortage, right? Toilet paper shortage, anyone? Um, I think this is hysterical. So I create my own reality, right? That's my belief. I create my own reality. So I heard this whole story about turkey shortage during Thanksgiving, there was going to be a turkey shortage and that turkeys were going to be astronomically expensive. None of that was true. It was a story that was being told. Um, Tree shortage, heard this one. So the tree shortage and the Christmas trees being super expensive caused me that the story that we heard, probably Facebook, we don't watch the news, probably Facebook or maybe even conversations with people. We ended up going shopping. We were going to get a fake tree. Now we have a fake tree that's like nine feet in our loft. And we like to have a tree downstairs when people walk in. And so um, we normally get a real tree because we're from New England and we love the real trees. We love the smell. They don't last very long here and you have to water them like it's, you know, crazy. We used to put it in a window and the sun would just like murder it. So we we actually created a whole new thing. But we went to go look for the, the fake trees because we believed the real trees, there was going to be a shortage and they were going to be expensive. Not freaking true. 
listen, people, you got to look, you got to listen, you got to pay attention. Because if you're just listening to these freaking stories that are out there of the fear and the shortage and be afraid and, and constrict and, and make sure you got all this shit in your house, like it's just, it's just an energy that's out there and we do not need to tune into it. So we ended up getting a beautiful real tree for a hundred dollars and it's downstairs and it's gorgeous. And we put it in a new place, not in front of the window, but the window can see it so that the sun doesn't kill it. So solution mode, right? But watch that shortage con consciousness. It's, it'll take you out and it's not right. It's not right. And it's not true. Um, uh, feeling unworthy. So we're going to get into unworthiness. I have a whole thing on unworthiness, expecting things to go wrong. How many people do you know? Like as soon as I get money, something goes wrong. As soon as I get money, something breaks, right? That's that feeling of like, I can't hold on to it. I can't keep it. It's slipping through my fingers. That feeling will, will absolutely predict your future. It will predict that something will go wrong and take your money. Um, being needy, never having enough, right? Never having enough. Not generous and not giving. When you are constricting your money and you are never being generous with it, it, it has an energy around it that's really yucky. Being generous, it's not about giving all of your money away. I'm not a big giving my money away. I don't give to foundations. I don't give to, I don't often give to homeless unless they really touch my heart. Um, because I just think it's disempowering to give money. I don't know. I just, there's a lot of things here in California. Um, we've got like a lot of uh, different situations with homeless where they've probably got more money than we do. So uh, I'm very careful about that. I actually go to my inner guidance on those things. Uh, unable to receive. So I have, I have friends um, who are unable to receive. Like they can't even let you pay for their parking. They can't let you buy them a cup of coffee. They always have to Venmo you back. And being unable to receive is a worthiness thing. That's a worthiness thing, like allowing someone to treat you to dinner, allowing and not looking at them and saying, oh, they couldn't afford this, so I shouldn't let them do it. Just receive it because they feel generous. They're feeling their abundance doing it. So value it, accept it, feel good about it, feel appreciation for it. And then that abundance energy is just being spread all over the place. Um, being upset about your bills or when you have to spend money. Yeah. Do anybody out there doing that? <laughs> you pissed off when you have to pay the electric bill? Are you mad when you got to put gas in your car because the gas is a lot? Are you mad about that? Are you mad about the groceries? I mean, listen, we're all in this. You know, we're all going through this. Our gas prices are through the roof. You know, I pay almost, I probably pay over $100 for a tank of gas now. Um, and groceries, I'm just like, holy shit. It's like every time I go to buy something, I look at the price and I'm like, wow, I wasn't it expecting it to be that much. But I can get mad about that and I can lower my vibe, right? And I can get pissed about it and then I can talk to my husband about it. And we can get like, you know, the world is coming to an end kind of a thing. Or I can just look at that and say, I'm so grateful that I'm able to do this. I am so grateful for a full tank of gas because there were so many times that I couldn't have a full tank of gas. So whether it's a hundred bucks or it's 75 bucks, I'm still extremely grateful that I am able to do it. Now we are entrepreneurial, so we both have our own businesses. So we have the ability to create more and to step into more worthiness. If you don't have that and you're looking at, you know, your job and your jobs, you know, your pay has not gone up, but all these other things have gone up. This is life force, baby. This is calling you out of your comfort zone. And it's saying, what do I need to do now? What do I need to do because this is not working anymore? How do I step into more worthiness? How do I step into more abundance? That's how you end up creating something on the side that actually activates your passion. And when you activate your passion and you stop relying on that life-sucking job, it's not really bringing you any, you know, excitement or passion, or you start looking for another job that will pay you more, that will conduct your worthiness, that will help you to up level, then there's more life force coming through you. And hallelujah for that, because we don't want to stay in a life sucking job. We don't want to stay in a job that just pays us a tiny bit that we're just getting by every month. You know, life is not all about money, but I will tell you, I have not had it and I have had it and it is way more fun having it. It is way more fun having it. There is way more life force coming through us. There is way more 
of a feeling of abundance. There is way more of a worthiness aspect to both of us. We are extremely happy. We are enjoying a, most of the time. And, you know, the money story just keeps getting better and better because of that. Because we've learned. Because we've learned so many times. Like, we're done learning. We got, we got it. Enough already, right? Um, all right. So we're going to talk about, let me see what else I have here. I had a couple of other things. Belief that, boy, if I could just read my own handwriting, let's say. Oh, okay. So belief that um, wealthy people are evil. So there's a lot of different um, memes. There's a lot of different like subconscious belief systems that are actually in our movies and things that will that will actually solidify this belief that wealthy people are evil, that they're not helpful, that they're not generous, and that it, by having money, you will not be a good person. If you believe that, you will keep money away. You will keep money away. And if you hate money, right? If you hate money, if you believe that biblical term, the, the root of all money is the root of all evil is money. If you believe that biblical term, then you can't create abundance in that. And it's fine if you're happy. It's fine if you're joyful. It's fine if you, you know, you're, you're doing fine. You're doing well and you're not interested in wealth or abundance. I think that most people, you know, have this belief system that if they just had money, all of their problems would go away. And that's absolutely not true. I do believe that money is a lot, a lot of, um, you know, creating more freedom for us, allowing us to do the things that cost money, that allow us to kind of free up our energy. You know, if you talk to people that have, that are wealthy, they don't think about money as often as somebody who doesn't, you know, someone who is w walking through life and doesn't have their, you know, means taken care of, like their home and their food and their bills and they're feeling very constricted and they feel like they never have enough, you're not living the truth of your worthiness in that, and you're not living in that aspect of freedom. And I will share with you what that means and how to activate more of that, that level of freedom, that level of trust, that level of faith. It's all a feeling, and it doesn't matter how much money you have to conduct the feeling. It doesn't. It sounds hard. And I'm going to say it's not hard, but it takes determination and focus to get there. It does. But it's not hard. It is not hard. It is all about your responses. It's all about how you feel and the stories you wrap around yourself and your money. So um, lack of lack of a healthy relationship around money. So you hate money, you, you know, you believe it's the worst, you're depressed, you know, you've got that depression about money, you've got those unworthiness energies, you, you've got this feeling of imprisonment in your life, like you can't do what you want to do because of money. All of those things will repel money from you. They will keep money away from you. They will keep miracles away from you. They will keep opportunities away from you. Um, not forever. But why would you want to even slow down the energy on your dreams and the things that you really want to want to do? When we moved from California, from Connecticut to California, I screw that up sometimes. I realize on one of my other shows, we moved from Connecticut to California. When we did that, you know, we decided we had never been able to save money before. We had decided we needed a certain amount of money to take this leap of faith. And when I tell you money was coming out of everywhere at that point, because we had activated so much energy, we had taken this huge leap of faith. We had booked plane tickets. We had set up for our car to be um, shipped. We were going to fill our car full of stuff and ship it. One little car. That's all we took and our suitcases. Um, my husband later came back for some tools. He had a place to store his tools. So he later came back for that. But as far as household shit, hardly anything. We kept hardly anything. We kept our pictures of our babies. Um, we kept, you know, whatever would fit in the car, some kitchen stuff, a um, couple pictures, like things that were meaningful we kept. But we came here with the nothing, like clothes on our back kind of a situation, needed to find a place to live. We created about $20,000 in a really short time. And $20,000 may seem like a lot or it may not seem like a lot to you. It's not a lot when you're moving across the country and you have to rebuild a home. We had to buy everything, beds, sheets, towels, furniture, uh, kitchen table, kitchen chairs, 
everything. In fact, a memory came up on Facebook yesterday of us six years ago on Christmas. It was before Christmas. We had our girls come in before Christmas thinking, oh, this will be great. We'll just celebrate beforehand because the flights are expensive. That was one of the worst Christmases of my life because my girls were already gone. My two girls were already back home and my two little ones were with us and we were just grappling to try to make it work. And it was, they were fighting. We were fighting. It was, it was ugly. It was ugly. We were not feeling abundant, but we had like a, um, like a, a plastic table with fold out chairs for a while. We had a cardboard box for a coffee table for a while. Uh, we ended up, I mean, we had a table that I bought that was too short for the TV. So my husband put a piece of plywood on it. I mean, we were just doing it. We were doing whatever it took. We were flying by the seat of our pants. It was crazy. I ended up um, opening all these furniture cards which was insane now that I think about it, but it really helped build my credit. And these were 0% interest. We have never paid interest on any of these cards. I'm so proud of that. We've paid off a whole house full of furniture. I'm so proud of that. And now we have three living room sets, um, four bedrooms worth of furniture, a gorgeous kitchen table that my husband actually refinished because I couldn't find anything I wanted. So he made me one. Um, I mean, a house full of stuff that is like, like we've lived here forever. So we've been able to rebuild, but only because we stepped into that worthiness, you know, finding a beautiful home, living where we want to live, living that dream was about feeling worthy. It was about stepping into our abundance. It was about creating a stronger life force and desire for what we wanted to create. And you can freaking do it too. You can do it too, because why would I be able to do it and you wouldn't be able to do it? You think I was born under a lucky star? I don't know. I mean, life's pretty good, but you know, it doesn't come without determination. It doesn't come without walking through fear. It doesn't come without igniting this fire within and trusting, holy shit, trusting, like the faith that we had to do that. And the miracles that happen to create more and more of a stronger faith, it's the only reason I'm allowed to speak to this. It's the only reason why I feel like I have something to offer, right? All right, so unworthiness. So this is how you know if you're feeling unworthy. You have an inability to receive. So when people try to give you stuff, you push it away. Compliments included. When people try to compliment you, when they try to tell you something wonderful about yourself, you're like, no, 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 and you reject it. You reject the meal out, you reject the paid parking, you reject the abundance that is trying to come to you. That is that is a number one, the feeling of unworthiness. Um, not believing that you deserve a wonderful life, you know, not believing that you deserve love, that you deserve a life that's worth joy and appreciation and living your dream, living where you want to live and creating the abundance of who you are, of who you truly are underneath. So in order to get rid of this unworthiness stuff, you've got to start meditating. And I've shared that 8 million times. You've got to go into quieting that mind, getting, getting down deep, getting in touch with those feelings underneath, going into your heart cleaning out all this bullshit, you know, the shitty committee, the the times your mom told you you weren't good enough, the times your teachers told you you weren't good enough, all that stuff that happened to your coaches. I mean, coaches can be brutal. Uh, we, oh, geez. Yeah. Coaches can be brutal. All the times that things have happened to you in your life that have created and solidified this feeling of unworthiness need to be cleaned out. They need to be cleaned out. I know there are many teachers out there that will teach you, oh, no, you don't have to go back. You just got to move forward. I'm not a big believer in that. And this is why. Because of my life experience, because I've worked with so many people that have this shit underneath and they're constantly vibrating from it. So when I ask the right questions, when I go in and do energy releases with people, oh, and stay tuned till the end because I'm doing an activation of abundance. I've decided I'm going to start doing some, some extra bonus stuff for you guys. So underneath, like your life is the way it is because you've got stuff underneath that you haven't dealt with. And that's why oftentimes things are manifesting that are not optimal. They're not what you want because you've got a belief system underneath there that is mucking it up, that is creating against 
what your desire is. So my belief is you got to go back. You got to go in, you got to look at these stories that were, you know, created in your neural pathways, you know, the things that your parents told you about money, the things your parents told you about who you could become, the things your teachers told you, all of the um, influential adults around you were showing you basically creating a belief system for you. You know, most of our beliefs are created before we're like five to seven years old. So whatever we witnessed as little ones, that's a lot of what we are conducting from if we've never gone in there and actually questioned any of it. Your The wealthy story around your family and how you grew up is a huge part of what you are manifesting now. So go within, ask, ask those really important questions of, of, you know, who am I and what am I here to create? And what do I, why do I have these desires in my heart? You know, I used to have all these desires, like in network marketing, they always have you do these things and they have you like write out your desires, you know, like what you want and, and it becomes your why, like, why are you doing this? And it was like, oh, I want the nice cars and I want the nice house and I want to be able to travel and I just want to be wealthy and damn it, I just want to win the lottery, right? Yeah, that was my old story. My story now is like, I just want to bring a lot of value to the world. And I want to feel that worthiness of the value that I bring. Truly, that is what I believe. Because I know that there's a flow of energy of life force that's important. You see these stories all the time when people win the lottery, and they end up creating a lot of shit, like a lot of problems, right? I know there was one one story I was watching. It was about this guy and he bought like, I don't know, three airplanes. Like it was so insane. And he, they ended up going broke. And he ended up, he was so unpopular in his town because everyone was so jealous that he won the lottery that he couldn't even get a job in his own town. So he had to get a job in another town like four or five hours away and leave his family to go work because they were so hurting for cash at that point. And they just got themselves in trouble. And, and I remember the, listening to the wife and her saying, I wish we never won this money. And it's like, that's what happens when like a whole shit ton of money falls in laps of people who never felt worthy to receive it. And why does that happen? I don't know. I'm sure it's like a destiny piece of what they need to process and what they how they need to up-level their growth here. Um, but coming into this new state of like allowing value and allowing my worthiness. It's not about material possessions anymore. It's not about, you know, I love luxury. I have always, my husband as well. We just love beautiful things. We love being VIP. That's like one of the coolest things. And that's a worthiness thing, you know, getting let in first, um, getting perks. We um, Who doesn't love that? If you don't love that, hello, maybe there's a worthiness issue there, but we love luxury. We love our beautiful car. We love our beautiful home. I love being surrounded by beautiful things in my home and that costs money, right? So to me, walking into my home and seeing all of these beautiful things right now, we're decorated for Christmas and it is so, it's just so wonderful. I just want to sit around it all the time. I just want to, you know, just, just feel the energy of all these beautiful things around me. It's not about being like into material possessions so much. It's about the feeling I get from creating a beautiful home. That's it. The feeling of abundance creates more feelings of abundance, creates more energy of abundance and actually allows abundance to be attracted to you. Okay. So not shining your light. Are you not shining your light? Are you sitting in the dark? Are you afraid to shine your light because you're afraid people are going to be jealous of you? Are you not shining your light because you don't feel motivated or inspired? I would have trouble believing that if you're listening to this because hello, this is all about being inspired. Um, feeling less than around others, you know, really feeling less than. It was funny, yesterday we went to the gym with my 20-year-old and her boyfriend Um And so we went to their gym, which there's a lot of younger people. There's people there our age too. But it was funny because in the past, I may have felt less than. It's like a big, big gym with lots of equipment. Um, I have some gym experience. I used to go to the gym a long time ago. But I'm fit. We're both fit and in shape. So we didn't feel less than. And I was like, that was such a good feeling to walk into this gym and not feel less than. And guess why? Guess why I feel that way? Because I've stepped into the identity of who I wanted to create. I'm no longer in the lack of that. 
So that's what you can do abundantly as well. You know, when you walk into beautiful homes or you see beautiful cars, feel your own worthiness in that. Feel your excitement. Feel your ability to create that. If it is in your field, if it is all around you, you have the ability to tune into it because it is being shown to you. And to become a reflection of it, you first of all have to stop being miserable when you see it. And secondly, you've got to be like, hell yeah, hell yeah, I'm worthy of that. Hell yeah, I'm worthy to be here. Hell yeah, I, I, um, I'm allowed to be in this world. I am allowed to be a human being. I'm allowed to have this experience. I'm excited to take up space. I'm excited for people to hear my voice. <sighs> I'm excited that I have passion and I have something to share with other people that could benefit them and show me how valuable I am in this world. God, that's so important. If you get nothing from the show, please get this. Shine your damn light. Not charging for your worth. So I had a conversation recently with a beautiful woman who I just adore. And uh, we were talking about value and we were talking about charging. And, you know, her take on this was like, well, I'm doing this really super spiritual thing. And I really, I'm just like so out of the money thing. Like, I just don't even want to deal with money anymore. It's just like, you know, third, uh, third dimensional world, you know, third, third dimension, you know, if you don't know dimensions, it's just like, it's this super dense reality that we're dealing with. And, uh, you know, if you're looking at the structures of the governments in the world right now, you could feel a little jaded by it and not want to be a part of any of it, the commerce, right? And I just said to her, I said, you know, we're human. We're human beings. And yes, we are spiritual. And yes, we are here to create some spirituality, but we're not here to lose our humanness. We're here to exchange energy. And the way that we do it here is through money. Um, we can barter. That's awesome. But most people, the value that they put on things is conducted through a money exchange. So if you really want people to value your work, if you really want them to get the most benefit out of your work, then paying for it and paying what it's worth to you and to them is a valuable exchange. It's about that energy field. It's the energy field you are creating. So instead of doing donations, I told her to do an energy exchange because that kind of leaves it up to people to go, oh, this is how I value this. Now for me, I did that for a little while and I, I feel really good charging. I really do. I feel I feel super freaking valuable about what I offer. I have huge benefit in what I offer and I see a lot of change and I see an incredible exchange of energy between what I offer and what people receive and what they give me. It's a reflection, right? And it works really, really well. And because of that, I do believe every single one of my clients will tell you that they have had a beautiful energy exchange with me and they are not left feeling lack of anything. And I don't feel lack of anything, which is a, which is a great way for me to stay um, super pumped up. And it's a great way for me to stay in my value and my worthiness. And it's a great way for my work to be um, conducted in such a way that I don't get burned out because that's really important to me. Not following through on your passions. You got some passions you're not following through on. Let's figure that out. Let's figure out how you can start opening the pathway to that because your passion is where your abundance is. What you are passionate about is absolutely where your abundance is. When you are in that flow, I watch my husband with this all the time. And sometimes the money can really, it can kind of muck things up for him because he's got to, you know, he's got to do these estimates and he's got to sell jobs. And I think for the, the meat and potatoes of what he does and what really brings him joy is building, building beautiful things for people. It's the joy that he brings to people's homes, creating beautiful things. It's the relationships and the connections that he makes. He talks about that all the time, just loving people, loving on people. And as long as people value his work and as long as he keeps that energy exchange really clean he has a good experience. It's when he gets into situations where people don't value his work. And it's funny because <clears throat> some of the wealthiest people have not, have not really valued his work and have really, you know, did some actually helped him up level. I will say did not do damage. They helped him up level in a lot of ways to the point where he started creating intentions for his clients 
saying, I want to work for people that have money. I want to work because whenever people are trying to budget, it's very stressful because these things always cost more, especially now. Um, People that have money that aren't afraid to spend money that appreciate and value what I do and appreciate and value the beauty and the craftsmanship that's going to go into their home because of what I'm offering. So he did that shift a little while ago and he has had wonderful clients since then. Uh, We really haven't we really haven't had too many issues as far as that exchange of energy for him. So that's, you know, that's a great intention to spend, to set if you are in an entrepreneurial position. Thinking things are too expensive. Oh yeah, I hear that all the time. Listen, if I want something, there's certain, you know, there's a, there's a set point. We were talking about the set point in my teaching. You know, we've got a set point. And it was funny because I went into a store recently that I used to go into like a long time ago when we first moved here. In fact, this sweater is from there. And it's called um, Melrose in the OC or OC Melrose or something like that. It's a really super cute boutique store. I only shop in boutiques, boutique stores because, um, I don't know, I just that's just the way I like to shop. I don't like to shop at the mall. So we go into this store recently and I realized like all of a sudden I've been shopping there quite a bit lately. And I, I all of a sudden I realized like I used to walk into the store and think it was too expensive. Like when we first moved here. So I was like, wow, my set point has shifted. It's changed. And I wonder if it'll change again. Now, there's certain things that I feel comfortable with that exchange. You know, like if I'm going to buy a pair of jeans, I like them to be in the 100 range under 100, right? Once we start getting into the 120, the 150, I got to really freaking love those jeans because I like to own a lot of jeans. So it doesn't make sense for me to just like keep spending so much money on them. But, you know, as I up level, that's going to change. I know that's going to change. So it's where is your set point and what, you know, what are you doing for the value of who you are, the worthiness of who you are? So I have a client who recently just purchased a a hot tub and like just watching her, I've watched her over the last few years, just completely step into abundance and the worthiness of who she is and the joy that she has created from purchasing this hot tub has been so fabulous to watch. I can't wait to sit in it one day with her. But, um, you know, we were talking about that and she's like, I am freaking worthy of this. We are worthy of this. Like we have worked hard our whole lives and we've gotten to the point where this is something we really want and we really desire and why should we have it. So that just was like freaking amazing. So that's, you know, there's things that we can do in that energy field of what do we feel worthy of. A few years ago, uh, when we, this was like the second year we were here, you know, we were still struggling along and we were still getting through. And one of the biggest things that changed for us was our response to our finances. So we stopped having so much fear. We stopped having so much anxiety. Um, we kind of just trusted. We had a lot of faith. You know, we, we created, um, a home for ourselves here. We had moved into a house. We trusted that we were going to have the rent. It was still a little bit of a bumpy ride, but one Christmas, my husband had given me these tickets to this horse show called Cavalia. If you've never gone, it is the most fantastic thing I think I've ever seen in my life. It's like these people on these horses and they're dancing and it's in this huge tent. And it was just like, And he did the VIP tickets of all things. And I remember looking this thing up because there was this huge tent on the side of the highway. And I was like, what the hell is that? And I remember thinking, oh my gosh, that's so expensive. It was like $250 a ticket. And he gave it to me for Christmas. And I remember feeling bad at first. I remember feeling bad. Like, oh, we shouldn't have done that. Like, oh, can we do this? Can we afford this? And then I remember changing my response. I remember breaking through that response, like just, just pushing the walls out of the way and saying, yes, I am worthy of this. And we had the most fantastic night, I think of our lives. Like it was one of the most coolest things we've ever done. Um, VIP tickets. I bought a new dress. I felt so good. Um, and we actually were able to like go and pet the horses after because we were, yeah, and they were, oh my God, French Brie, their hair, they were just, they were so loved and cared for these horses that I just, it, the feeling of abundance was, it was like tops, tops. But my response changed and we started to change our response. We stopped, re- we stopped responding in so much fear. We started having more faith. We started trusting our journey. We started really creating abundantly because we trusted and believed in that. And we kept up leveling because of that. 
Um, not valuing, valuing yourself or others, becoming too spiritual. I just shared that. Not wanting to receive, you know, no, I'm good. I'm good. I don't want anybody. I don't want to burden anybody. <clears throat> you feel like how much money you have is what you're worth. If you don't have a lot of money, that's not true. That's not freaking true. I'm telling you right now. There is an infinite freaking supply, people. There is an infinite supply. There is an infinite energy. And there's a book out by Michael Bernard Beckwith, Spiritual Liberation. And this is also in Diane Collins' book. And it's like when you stop worrying so much about your survival and you trust and you have faith and you believe that your money comes from an infinite source, from the infinite potential from God, from the universe, from source. When you start to believe and trust in that, money can come. It can come in a lot of different ways. It doesn't have to just come from your job because you are trusting, you're having faith, and you're stepping into that true worthiness of your being, of the abundance that is your birthright, the abundance that is your birthright. Um, expecting others to pay for you, Ooh, yeah, that's not good. Just because somebody else might, you know, appear to have more money than you, it's not good. It's not good to be in the energy field expecting others to pay pay for you and then not, not really having gratitude for it, just kind of taking. Don't be a taker. Please don't be a taker. So it's time to shift your money story, and this is how we do it. This is how we do it. Write down your beliefs. Write down the beliefs you grew up with. Write down any beliefs you have around money and the story you have wrapped around it. Um, and then decide which ones are lackful and begin letting them go. Begin interrupting them. Begin activating that worthiness by going into meditation, quieting your mind, and connecting with that part of you that is true and real. I'm going to do that activation for you as well today. Remind yourself how many times you've manifested money. I had so many stories. I have a million stories about manifesting money, truly manifesting money. Um, practice gratitude when you're spending. Thank that electricity. Thank your gas company. Thank your gas tank. Be thankful. Be grateful. The more grateful and the more gratitude you throw on your money and wrap around your money, the more money is going to come because it's an energy. Start sharing your gifts and your passions. That's where all of your abundance is. And it may not start out at first, you know. When I started this podcast, I'm not even sure how long I did it for before money started to show up. And that money only started to show up because I activated my passion and I started stepping into what I, the value of what I had to give. So I started really connecting with ideas because once you start activating your passion, more ideas come. More money making ideas come. When you activate from your passion, when you really start going, there's an idea and I'm going to, I'm going to manifest that idea. I'm going to work on that idea. I'm going to put some attention and focus and energy into that idea instead of just letting it float by, instead of letting my mind talk me out of what my heart is calling me to. Practice a feeling and acting worthy. So letting go of unworthiness is an inside job. How are you going to let that go? How are you going to let those old stories go? Where does this unworthiness come from? Is this, is this like my mom's voice inside my head? Is this my teacher's voice inside my head? Where does this unworthiness come from? Because it's just an invitation to heal. It's just an invitation to step into more of who you are. You know, if you've got this low self-esteem, low self-confidence, there's some, there's some activation that needs to happen. There's some energy release that you need to work on. And, uh, and I'll put that in my, in my activation. How, um, what can I do? How can I feel more worthy? And what can I do to activate the feeling of abundance? I remember my energy healer saying, you got to take your mind, you got to take your mind and you got to take your, your focus off your bank account because it ain't showing you abundance right now. So we would go to the ocean. We would go to the sunset. I would focus on the sky. I would focus on the beautiful day. I would focus on the hummingbirds. There's so many hummingbirds here. I would focus on the love I have for my family. I would focus on the abundance of food. If we had an abundance of bananas, I'd focus on that. Um, you know, and I would feel the gratitude and appreciation for that. Uh, the home we were living in, I wasn't crazy about, but I found reasons to love it. I found spots in the house that made me feel good. I found places to meditate. Um, I had some pretty beautiful furniture. I was super grateful for that. Even though we were still paying it off, I was super, super grateful for that. My husband's always been one for like plants. So like we've got a ton of succulents and beautiful flowers to appreciate. So all those things can activate abundance. 
Do I have ideas to generate money and have I acted on them yet? And why not? Why not you acted on those ideas? Because those ideas are gold. They are super gold. And once you start really putting your energy forth, you know, putting your foot in the little pond there, you just never know where those ripples are going to create opportunity for you. Do I believe in the flow? This is a big one because, you know, when people constrict and they feel like they can't spend money, um, I hate that feeling. I really hate that feeling. And I've gotten better about like not throwing things on credit cards anymore because I want to be responsible. I want to pay down our debt. I want to, you know, I've lived this like, woohoo, I'm spending money. It feels so good. I've lived that. And now I'm at the point where I just want to be more respectful. I want to be responsible. I want to, you know, not be under stress. I want to feel good. I want to be able to do things. So, you know, in that it's like, oh, I'm not going to put things on credit cards, but it doesn't mean I can't spend money. It just means I need to be a little smarter about it. And it means it means that I can make more. So allowing that flow, that ebb and flow, it goes out, it comes in, it goes out, it goes in. When it gets stressful is when it's going out faster than it's coming in. So you got to check on those feelings because if you got those feelings of anxiety, it's going to promote more of that outflow, not the inflow. So when you spend the money and you're grateful and you feel really good about it, more comes. When you're constricted and you're fearful, you slow down the energy and less comes in. So pay attention to that flow. How can I up-level my set point? You know, how can I up-level that set point? <clears throat> how can I, you can't, first of all, you can't spend yourself into worthiness. You have to feel it first. Once you really feel worthy, you'll do things that you wouldn't normally do and your response will feel different. So I say this all the time. If you are, <clears throat> if you're going to treat yourself, right, if you're going to really treat yourself to something and you're going to feel really good about it when you're doing it, do not feel guilty afterwards or feel crappy about it afterwards. Once you spend the money, please feel good about it because if you don't, you're going to, you're going to shut down the flow. You're going to slow down the energy. So when you spend the money, feel good about it. Because, you know, we have never spent money that we ended up living to regret. <laughs> we really never have. We've taken these beautiful vacations with our kids. It's taken us a while to pay them off. And it, there's just never, we've never really had to suffer from doing that because we were living in abundance. We were living in that energy field. And so we're able to get that flow back to, um, to sustain it. How can I gain the influence and activate more abundance in my life? And am I doing things to try to be more abundant? How can I step in more fully? How can I step in more fully to my abundance? How can I let this money story go and stop allowing money to steal my joy? How can I do that? How? Remember, when you ask these questions, you're going to start to get answers. When you start journaling, when you start getting curious, when you start really wanting to know yourself and have a relationship with yourself, that's when you're going to activate self-love and self-worthiness because you're paying attention and you're not allowing these old stories, these old neural loops and these old energies to run your field anymore. You're not going to allow these to be your set point anymore. That was my mother's set point. That was my grandmother's set point. I don't want that to be my set point. I want to be able to step into a serious amount of abundance where I am valued, where I see my value in the world, where I offer my value in the world, where I feel excitement and life force and passion. And because of that, I am seeing the <clears throat> reflection of that, right? Woo! Okay, so I'm going to do a little um, activation for you guys. This is exciting. And uh, this is part of the work that I do. So I do some clearing and then um, we're just going to activate some more, some new intentions. So if you're driving, do not do this and close your eyes. Maybe pull over. Maybe wait, maybe pause this and wait till you get home. But this is something you can listen to now. You can listen to it before you go to sleep at night. You can listen to it <clears throat> during your meditation in the morning. Like it's a really good thing. So we're at like a minute 58 points, point 18, 58 minutes and 19 seconds. So that's where you need to go on the video if you want to just do this part. All right. So close your eyes. Take a nice deep breath. <clears throat> and when you take a deep breath, I want you to breathe in and just breathe out all the tension from the day. Yeah. Clear your field. Just take a, oh. Just a big breath. And let your shoulders drop. And let your energy just be open. Take another deep breath. And 
and just feel yourself sitting in the chair. So we're bringing ourselves out of our minds and into our bodies. Just breathe, get really acclimated with that breath and paying attention to breathing. Letting the lungs open. And letting all the stale air out of your lungs. So when we're stressed, we do some really shallow breathing. So when we get back into deep breathing, we just allow an activation of well-being bringing oxygen into the body and clearing all the energy out. So coming into your root chakra, which is below your spine, I want you to imagine that there's all this energy around your root. And just for a moment, I want you to think about the things in your root which is connected to your support in the universe. It's connected to your prosperity. It's connected to all of your money stories and your beliefs. So I want you to connect. Ooh, energy is moving already. I want you to connect to that money sto story and all the ways that you have felt lackful. So I want you to just let some words pop up and we're just going to take a deep breath and we're going to release them. So... Releasing all energies of lack, releasing all depression energy, generational energy of lack of abundance, all the beliefs you have around lack of prosperity, all the beliefs you have about being unsupported, unworthy, untrustful, releasing all energies of lack of faith, lack of trust, and all the energies of lack of money. Yeah. Oh, let that all go. Woo, it's going. So just keep breathing it out. Keep breathing out all these words. Release all your energies around money that are of um, negativity. So all the hate around money, all the hate of wealthy people, all the jealousy of wealthy people, all the angst around money, all the anxiety and fear, and all the ways that you have constricted and slowed down the energy field around money. Great. Ooh, I'm kind of dizzy. That was a lot. <clears throat> so then coming into your solar, well, let's go into the sacral. So coming into your sacral, which is below the belly button, let's release all blocks to our creativity. Let's, let's release all beliefs that money can't be created through being creative, which is so untrue if you look at our world. Um, there's no such thing. There does not need to be any such thing as a starving artist or a struggling creative. We can release the energies and the beliefs around that. So any blockages to your passions, any blockages to you shining your light, any blockages and imbalances in your emotional field. So we release depression energy. We release lackful energy. We release all the energies of being unmotivated, uninspired, and all of those energies that have talked you out of what your heart is calling you to. Good. Take a deep breath and just release all the lack out of the sacral chakra. And then coming into the solar plexus, we're just calling on all those ways in which you have kept yourself in a feeling of unworthiness. So I want you to think about that for a moment. All the ways and all the stories and all the people and all the experiences that have made you feel less than that have caused you to feel low self-esteem or low self-confidence and unworthiness, all those ways in which you felt like you're not good enough, you shouldn't be that, you can't be that, you can't do enough, all those energies that have caused a blockage in your solar plexus, we ask for those fully to be released. So energies being released of lack of self-confidence, lack of self-esteem, unworthiness, not being good enough, not trusting yourself, not trusting your gut, um, shutting down your inner guidance, not trusting that you are worthy beyond, beyond um, releasing all energies of powerlessness, um, lack of your creation power, so lack of life force, lack of desire, all those ways in which you've talked yourself out of your passions. Yeah. Releasing all the energies in your heart that have caused you to feel unlovable, that have caused you to feel lack, 
that have caused you to feel unforgiveness, distrust, um, true worthiness and love. Yeah, worthiness of love, powerlessness, uh, jealousies, resentments, anger, all those energies in your heart that have caused you to not step into the full appreciation and love of who you are. So releasing energies of self-criticalness, self-hatred, um, just a low energy field of, of, of yourself, of your own self-worthiness, of your own self-love. Yeah. Releasing that connection to the shitty committee, allowing you to fully release from your um, feeling of powerlessness and your feeling of being abandoned and unloved. Energies of grief. We release all energies of grief that may be blocking your joy. And we release all energies in the heart chakra from anything that happened with money that caused you to feel heartbroken or caused you to not believe or trust in this infinite uh, universal supply. And then releasing energies from your throat. We just unblock the throat chakra to connect it to our heart so we can speak our passions and our truth and be driven through our life force. Releasing all energies that cause you to shut down your truth that cause you to not speak from the love of who you are. And then releasing all energies in the third eye, which is in your, your forehead, releasing all energies that block your intuition, your creativity, your intelligence, your wisdom, allowing that monkey mind to be released and to be quieted so you can have a deeper meditation practice, so you can connect with the divine more easily. And you can turn up the volume of your intuition. And then releasing from the top of your crown, we release any blockages to your spiritual connection. We allow that spiritual connection and human connection to be one so that we can be human and still feel truthful and faithful and spiritual and still conduct on this human plane. So through this, we release all those energies around your entire quantum field. We release all those energies and belief systems from your neural pathways, and we step into the light. So I want you to take a step forward in your mind's eye, and I want you to feel this light all the way around your body, and I want you to feel this light coming through the top of your head, and this is the light. We call on you know divine energies, angelic energies, and all energies of the infinite supply of abundance prosperity, and connection to our true worthiness. Yeah, let that come in. Let that light come into your neural pathways, fully igniting the worthiness and truth of you of who you are, igniting that third eye to be creative, to work forward, to move forward with ideas and excitements and passions, bringing that light into your throat, fully activating your truth and the connection of wisdom to your heart. Activating that love, that beautiful self-love, that connection of love and energy that you are so an infinite uh, expression of, yes, and bringing that light into your abdomen, fully activating the abundance and worthiness and truth, self-esteem and powerfulness. So worthiness, powerfulness, and the truth of who you are, allowing that power center to be ignited with that fire that you have within, ignited in your truth, and just being so excited to share all of the passions that you have to share. Activating your creativity and the sacral chakra, allowing you to move forward, balancing out that emotional field so you feel more appreciation, love, and joy activating the root. So we're activating security. We're activating trust, faith, truth, and the truth that abundance is our birthright, that we, the faith and trust we have is available to us anytime we get determined and focused to feel it and trust it and be one with it. So bringing in that infinite supply of your potentials, allowing you to live your dreams, allowing you to believe in the ability to live your dreams and activating those possibilities and potentials to move the energy around uh, faster, to move it along faster so that you can see evidence of it 
and create more from that belief and trust in the evidence that is being shown to you. So take a deep breath. <sighs> Let all that energy activate in your, in your cellular structure, in your DNA, um, shifting the map of your DNA, shifting and up-leveling your set point, allowing you to feel the abundance that is all around you, allowing you to create more of what you are desiring, and allowing you to feel the deep, deep, deep satisfaction of knowing that you are an expression of all that is. And because of that, the greatest gift that we have is to tune into our passions and allow that joy to be expressed through us so we can up-level those around us. Yeah, so turning on that light, activating that light from within so that we can allow others to be activated through our activation of knowing who we are. Powerful worthy, infinite, and filled with the greatest potential there is to create our own realities. So let all that beautiful light come in through the top of your head, just activating your whole body all the way around, about three feet, four feet around your body, wrapping you up in a warm blanket of worthiness, allowing you to feel your truth. And there you go. You have been activated. <laughs> so that is my show for today. And I will say, you know, living from a state of abundance, living from a state of joy, it's your right. It is your absolute right as a human being on this earth to tune into those frequencies that you are most worthy of and to tune out of those things that are stealing your joy, to tune out of those things that are creating wonky boundaries for you, where you are not able to stay in your alignment, you know, stepping into that life force more, that desire, that trust, and those ideas that are coming every single day that are calling to you. It's so necessary and it's so important and it's such a more wonderful way to live, to activate from that epic greatness of who you are. And I'm excited to watch it and I'm excited to witness it. And please share with me, you know, any manifestation stories you have and, and how this activation worked for you. I would love to hear about that. Um, you can review the podcast, go to the reviews and, and review it. If it's helped you, that would be amazing. Um, you can subscribe at www.livelifegolden.com. I have quantum speak for sale through me or through Amazon. And I also have quantum speak for parents. I also have a meditation teaching available to help you to learn how to meditate on my website. Uh, you know, this life is calling a lot through us. I know every day I'm getting these ideas and I've got, you know, to get on these things that are going to create more abundance and feeling the excitement of that. And this podcast is just a way for me to express more of that and to, you know, get on that train, get on that train of abundance because there's a train of abundance and it's filled with the, all the wonderful things that you want to experience in this life. And you are absolutely not only is it possible, but you absolutely have the potential to create it. I love you all. Peace.